for bargains with an eBay auction expert in this hour of Call for Help. Hi, Call for Help. Chang, Leo's out again today, so we'll be here to, at the helm answering your tech-related conundrums. So if you have a question, be sure to send us an email through our website, techtv.com slash call for help. And on today's show, it's no secret, eBay is an awesome place to find bargains if you're shopping online. But if you really want to find the best deals, you got to know how to find them. So today, Toby Molina, the author of Sell It on eBay, there she is, will be here with a few window shopping secrets guaranteed to help you find the very best bargains on eBay. And they're out there, boy. Cool. Plus, we're landing our new lad guy, Ian, out of his cage. Why? Because he's done the impossible. He found a free video editing program that actually works. And it won't crash your system. Guaranteed. He'll be here to show us some of the great highlights of that system. And how would you like to strut around town with your very own specially designed laptop bag? It's pretty cool. We'll show you a site that will let you express your inner fashion designer by building the perfect bag. There's some examples right now. Cool. Yeah, it's really fun. I want fun. a personal bag. Before we get started, I went to the NVIDIA party last cool. night where they launched the new graphics card. Hopefully it'll be better than their current line. Yeah, and um, they had a whole LAN party. I took some pictures, so if you want to check them out, go to uh, my Mo blog. You can go to catchworts.com, click on the little picture on the bottom left. So check out Is these pictures. Is that a pictures. mermaid by your head? Oh, yeah, that was like the only other girl besides me and Sarah Lane at And this the party. is out of a group of how many people? Here, there she is. <laughs> Well, she, this poor woman, she was like, the whole presentation was based around the graphic of this chick that they built. And um, it's, it's beautiful, wow. by so the she way. She sat up there for like three yeah. hours? Yeah, so they had her sitting up there for three wow. hours. Wow, what about really like, great. you know, bathroom but breaks But I want to show you the box that won the mod competition. Oh, Check cool. this thing out. Look at that. There it looks it like is. a human or robotic head well, with a large really nose. Cool. It had two motherboards and an Xbox built in. And you see down here, this is all the water cooling system. Cool. It was all tricked out. The guys that won were pretty excited. How many people built that? Two, I think three? it's just two guys, yeah, and they, wow. they said, I'm actually going to get in contact with them soon, but it was great. They had a LAN party, and this guy up here, he won the competition, and then he won a, um, a gaming machine that's worth like 17 grand, 17 and he grand? said that it's all due to his mouse pad. This is his gaming wow. mouse pad. It's like this he, flat so board he, thing. He got a $17,000 system yeah. for coming out with a mouse pad? Yeah. No, oh. no, 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 no. He got, he says that he won because of his mouse pad. And, oh, um, the game. I see, I see what you're yeah, saying. Yeah, yeah, they were playing... Um, they were playing, Unreal? yeah, they were playing in real tournament, and but it, the final two guys were in the same crew, and it was just really interesting watching them playing and stuff. It was fun. Well, I'm in the wrong biz. I should have taken up video gaming. I know. Yeah. Yeah. So go go check out the pictures. They're fun. All right, you ready to take our first call, Rob? Yes, I am, Cat. All right, let's do it on the Tech TV Netcam Network. It's Justin from Hamilton, Ontario. Hello, Justin. Hey, Justin, Hello. how you doing? There he is. Oh, I'm doing good. What's up, dude? Um, well, my question for today is, I'm curious, uh, I've got Acrobat Reader 6, and uh, on a document, I'm curious how I can insert text into the document itself. Now, you want to, they, it's, a, it's just like a government form? Uh, yeah, exactly. Um, it's, it's actually a Canadian government form. Um, Ooh. You'd think that they'd make it a lot easier it's, for uh, Well, you know, one of the reasons why a lot of government agencies, American uh, government included, use PDF because it actually has everything justified where they need it. You know, it's like having a paper document, uh -huh. but electronically. And unlike a Word document where sometimes, depending on how you set up, the margins can be off, this is pretty much set. Right. Uh, so people can easily print it yeah, out, and fill everyone, it out. It's if, uniform. Uh, Acrobat Reader is free, so anyone can view it. Right. Now, uh, are you, do you know uh, offhand, Justin, if this uh, PDF form is interactive? Um, I honestly don't. Huh. So uh, there are, in fact, interactive ones. Huh? Yeah, and this, is, this came out because, you know, when the IRS started printing out forms, actually a lot of government agencies started printing out forms for people to fill in information. Right. People wanted a way to put their, type their information yeah. in without having to print it out, type it on a typewriter, mail Plus it in. Plus, if they have bad handwriting like I do, it's just um, nicer. So one of the uh, products, uh, th this uh, product, Cute PDF Form Filler, is uh, one such program that will allow you to fill out those PDF forms. And it's cute. There's a, there's a dozen of them. Uh, I like this one particularly because I like the uh, cute PDF uh, printer, which is pretty cool. Very simple to use. All I need to do is open the file. You like their pr its printer? Uh, cute PDF printer. It's a free PDF uh, program that lets you turn anything you print into a PDF form. Oh. Uh, just double click. And uh, the cool thing is that it gives you a trial version that you can use. Uh -huh. 
How much is it to buy, do you know? Uh, it's, uh, I believe, 30 bucks. Okay. Um, and you can see right here, this is just, this is just a, a miscellaneous okay. IRS document, but I can put my name. Uh, Wait, so no, you, did you just say that this one is interactive? It is. This okay. form, this is a government form from the okay. uh, United States government, IRS, and I can put in that information because this form was created as an interactive form, right. so I can put in this information. How can you tell whether or not it's an interactive um, form? Usually on the website, it will tell you. It okay. will say this is an interactive PDF form when they offer it. And more likely than not, Justin, yours probably is because they wouldn't have issued it otherwise. And if it's not? If it's not, then you would have to either go with a PDF distiller to take it back into text. PDF distiller, it's called? Uh, distiller. Distiller is what uh, Adobe sells as a program to create as well as open PDF documents that you can uh, re-edit them. Mm -hmm. um, but that, that is a very high-priced product. Another product I found that kind of lets you do the same thing is PDF Typewriter. Okay. And this works on uh, the... I'm sorry. It's also a distiller? Um, kind of. It's just more of an editor. It lets you edit kind of any document as well as creating them. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm going to open that same document. Yeah, I mean, PDFs are kind of tricky just because a lot of times they are so permanent and hard to change. Um, but that's the point in a sense. But the cool thing is that you can add your own type okay. and text. And if you want, you can actually blank out stuff in it as well. It's going to take a, a couple of seconds here. What's this program called This again? is called PDF Typer. It is also PDF a typer. pay for. Uh, I think this is 40 or oh, 40 off. It looks kind of uh, kind of crummy here right now, but don't worry, it actually looks better when it's done. This is just to speed up the view when uh, the view process when you want to edit. Is it also tell, sort of telling you where you can and cannot type right there? Uh, you can type anywhere you okay. want. You can add text anywhere. See where this box is? I yeah. can start typing oh, away. I, I can see. type over the existing type document. But you can't document. move things around really easily. Uh, you can. You can actually, once you're done, you can actually, it's it's like a graph. You oh, can this is you, cool. you can move it around I see. Um, where you want it. You just grab it by, I believe, one of the, the handles okay. here. And you can do it. Um, you have that solution. Another solution, actually, Kat, you found, is to convert the document from a PDF into another form that you can type in. Mm -hmm. um, this is the one you found, Kat, I believe? Yeah, it's just through a website. Uh, I don't know what the website's called. Let me see it's if I can pull it up here. Well, there's an example of it turning a PDF uh, into an This turned a HTML PDF though. document into uh, just a standard HTML document. Yeah, so that's easy. And enough. from there, you could also... Go this, to, like, that link right there. This one right here, right? And uh, oh, here it comes. No, I'm not sure oh, where right, it is. Oh, right here it is. We'll go, gobcl.com. Okay. Uh, this is the one you did. Yeah, convert. yeah, there it is. And um, it will convert, you know, from HTML, which is great because then you can also type, you know, with a with a notepad. Other do there are other free f uh, files out there that will convert it into a text, you know, RTF or .txt file, <laughs> with the caveat that all the formatting is going to go. So all the nice little boxes, all the little rectangles they have are going to go. Um, that's why it's probably best to try out. Uh, a PDF form filler. That way, you know, if, it, if it's not, then you can try the other options, but I would probably go with that first. Does that help you out, Justin? Yes, it does. All That's right. Perfect. Kind Thank of a lot much. of info. It'll all be posted on our website. Thanks for calling. Nice Thank to you. see your face. Have a nice day. Bye. Coming Bye. up next, a lot of people are using their cell phones to send and receive emails, but is it possible that one of those messages could actually contain a virus? Very interesting question. And a caller is calling in concerned about infecting his new celly. So we'll be talking about it right after Selling. the break. Celly? Celly, cell, cell, cell. Sally? Can you actually get a On the phone right now, it's Devon from Port of Spain at Trinidad. What's up, Devon? Hey, Devon. Hey. How you doing? I'm quite all right. And you? Oh, uh, yeah, we're, we're doing, doing fine. Good. good, good, good. What's your question today? Well, um, my question is about viruses on mobile phones. Uh -huh. I set up my Yahoo Mail account to send a copy of any new messages to my mobile phone. But lately, I've been getting more than a few possible viruses which Yahoo quarantined for me. But I was wondering, what if I do get a virus, if not from Yahoo, then from someone sending something to my phone's email address? No. So you're worried about getting a virus on your cell phone? Because Yes. Through your cell phone? Because you're getting attachments from people, correct? Yes. Uh, what kind of cell phone do you have? I have a Sony Ericsson T316. Wait, what do you mean he's getting attachments? Uh, well, certain cell phones, now, it's, it's kind of weird. Generally, uh, cell phones, though, you know, your kind of free ones, your low-end model ones, mm -hmm. you really can't get a virus on them because they're, they're not designed to actually accept input and run an executable file in that fashion. Okay. Now, what you're going to run into as a lot of PDA slash 
cell phone hybrids come out, you're going to start running into security issues because you know, now these cell phones have extended capability. They can run objects off the mm -hmm. web. They can run files. Mm -hmm. Um, so what happens... What's so wait, wait, but I'm, I'm still confused about the attachment thing. Are you saying that it's coming through like an SMS message, you're getting an attachment? Pardon? Are you, when you say you're getting an attachment through your cell phone, do you mean that you're actually getting like an SMS message sent, something like a text message with an attachment? Yes, okay. that's something like that, yes. Okay, so then that goes yeah. to the more capable phones. Yeah, that right. would go to more capable phones. On the, on, you know, on the whole, you probably shouldn't have to worry about it because... Uh, a lot of cell phones tend to be kind of proprietary, yeah. and to write something that would affect that particular cell phone brand would require, you know, a, someone who really cares about that particular <laughs> model, or, or the desire to write customer. enough of them that would, they would infect uh, a whole range yeah. of models. I was looking on Symantec's website. They said that there was a hoax once. The, there was a hoax. That. There was an email hoax that was going around that saying that you know your cell phone can get infected. Um, more than likely not. Again, this is only for you know your your typical cell phones. When you start uh, branching onto PDAs, where you have, for example, uh, Microsoft-based smartphones, uh -huh. which are essentially uh, their Microsoft Pocket PC PDAs yes. with cell phone functionality, you can probably infect that. Okay. Because that essentially is a small little computer. You can run executables. You can download. You can infect. There's a lot of stuff to infect right. on a PDA. In fact, uh, Palm had one a, couple, uh, a year and a half ago. Yeah. People say you can get one at Palm, but you can't. Um, so you're, you're saying that... It's mo more than likely he's okay. Yeah. Um, you know, attachments, I mean, you can't, can you even open the attachment on your cell phone? Pardon? Can you open that attachment on your cell phone? Currently, I cannot open the attachment on my cell phone, but in the future, I'm supposed to be able to. I'm actually waiting on the um, phone company down here to get the... Well, up and running. You know what? Just like you shouldn't open an attachment coming from someone that you don't know in your email, do the same thing with your cell phone. Make sure if you get some random attachment, don't open it. And if you get something from one of your friends, call your friend first and say, hey, did you send me something just in case? But yeah, at I this mean, point, you know, there's I not mean, really a big threat you're, you're but in the future. Exactly. I mean, you're not going to see a, you're not seeing a huge wave of infection on cell phones that you do see on PCs. Uh, it'll probably come up uh, probably right. in the near future as people demand more computer-like functionality out of their cell phones, right. which makes it easier for virus writers to, to find flaws, security holes they can take advantage of because they're so much more complex. Yeah. Uh, with really uh, you know, uh, dumb, simple cell phones that you know, you just, that all you can do is make a call. Yeah. You, you get no uh, SMS, you get no pictures, you get no camera. Right. Um, you won't have to worry about it. You know, again, you know, CAD brings up a good point. Just uh, follow the same advice as you would, you know, with a computer attachment. Don't open it unless you know who it's from and what exactly the attachment is. Right, but at this point, you're probably not infected. Did that help you out? It sure does. Okay, thank, thank you. you so much for calling in, Devon. Still ahead, eBay expert. Thank you for helping me. Oh, sure, anytime. Call back again. Still ahead, eBay expert Toby Molina will be here to show you how to find some of the very best deals on eBay. There's some awesome steals out there. You just have to know how to find them. And coming up next, we're going to show you how a free file that will let you edit digital video just like the pros do. It literally works like a very expensive program that's free. We're going to show you some of its features when Call for Help continues. If you're interested in learning more about non-linear video editing systems, the best place to start is with today's free file, Avid Free DV. Here to tell us more about it is the man who found it, Ian. Thanks, Roger. Roger, this is the coolest thing to happen to nonlinear video editing since the undo button. Since the undo button? Yeah, wow, that's, a, that's a pretty high up there. Yeah, it's very important. Uh, what it is is it's a free version of the professional video editing suite Avid. So, and this is the one that most uh, movie houses or production uh, houses use to edit feature length movies. That's correct. And it, you, you don't use film, it's all on the computer. And uh, this version right here is actually a free version of the DV suite of Avid. There are several kinds. There's Avid Express, Avid Composer. This is Avid DV, and it's a free version. Cool. And uh, it's essentially the same thing. Um, what you can do is you can I'll go show in. Show us a little bit right. how it works here. Okay. Uh, first off, we're going to select a clip or okay. clips that we want to eliminate. All right, yeah. This, this clip right here, I don't like. It doesn't really fit into the, into the sequence. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cut it out. Okay. All right, and there it goes. I'm going to put in an endpoint. I can go up here to my bin, 
and I can double click on any one of these uh, DV clips that I've uh, digitized, and it'll okay. come up, let's see here, screen. Now, now, does this work a lot like the full version of Avid? So, yes, it does. So yes. if you use this, you could migrate easily to a professional uh, Avid setup without too much trouble. That's correct. All of the hotkeys are the same, the setup is the same, really everything okay. is the same. I jumped over to this after working on Avid Composer, so really there was no, for, for myself, someone who's familiar with uh, the Avid suite, the learning curve was fairly low. Someone who hasn't used this before, okay. it's going to take a little while so to get it's used not, to. So it's not something you can jump into, like, say, with iMovie or even Final Cut Pro, where you, it's kind of uh, uh, self-explanatory, where you can kind of understand. This seems a little more obtuse, probably because of the additional functionality. Now, I've noticed that the tile says Avid Free DV. Does that mean you only can use a DV camera or DV connection to, to take uh, sources in? That's correct. Uh, but you can also import other uh, file formats to put into your timeline. So if you go into here, into your bin, you go File, Import, right down here you okay, can Okay, so I see you, sh you have an AVI and a uh, um, uh, QuickTime Movie. Now this also lets you take in still images I see, so you can put like a graphic for a title shot or perhaps a, a segue between two scenes. That's correct, and also you can import uh, audio files too, uh, MP3s and whatnot. I if you want, a, you know, audio track or uh, right. music track. Up here I have a Beatles song in the bin. Cool. And uh, you know, I, I put together a little clip here. This is for the Timbuktu uh, sequence that's coming up. You know, and you can play it, and you have audio. Two channels of audio. You only have two channels of audio, All right. and one channel of video. It, again, it's it's truncated, but still the functionality is the same. Okay. Uh, now, if you want to export, do you have any issues, or can you just export straight out to an AVI uh, clip? You can uh, actually export to a QuickTime file, and right here I have the sequence right here as a QuickTime file. This is what we uh, what we just did. Cool. Here. I don't know. If, well, might you know, I'm might take a second to come up, but I'm yeah. sure you know anyone who's actually really interested in nonlinear video editing, especially anyone who wants to get into uh, editing in general for video or even movies. You know, this is probably a great place to start. Thanks a lot, Ian. No problem, Roger. All right. If you want to learn more about this program, we got a link on our site, TechTV.com/slash call for help. All right, Kat, do we have another call on the line? Oh, Roger, we always have callers on the line. Right now, on the phone, it is Dave from Chanhassen, Minnesota. Hey, hey what's up, Dave. Dave? Hey, Roger, Kat. What's how's cracking? How's it going? Thanks for calling in today. So how's the, uh, how, what's it like up there in uh, Chanhattan? Uh, Chanhattan. Birthplace of uh, Prince, or the artist formerly known as. Prince? Wow. Ah. Is there like a giant monument in his honor? Like yeah, I live right behind uh, Paisley Park. Ooh. Right behind the studio. So. Nice. Cool. All right, how can we help you today, Dave? Uh, basically, uh, my, my computer is two years old, and I'm wondering if I should update the BIOS. That uh, always freaks me out, yes, just because I hear terrible things about going into the BIOS, but what do you do, Raj? Well, let me explain to people who might not know what the BIOS is. The BIOS is the low-level intelligence of your computer. It's basically, when you turn on your computer, the BIOS is what brings the PC up. It's all the numbers and numbers and letters you yeah. see when you first turn your computer on. It's kind of, yeah, it's kind of, like, essentially, it's the, the, the low-level intelligence that brings the computer far enough to load the operating system. Got when it. you turn on a computer, Windows doesn't automatically load. The right. BIOS starts it up and then says, hey, I got a hard drive. There's an OS on the hard drive. Let's load the OS. Okay. Um, Dave, do you have any issues right now? Is your computer acting funny, or do you have any issues with updates or hardware installations? No, everything's fine, but I'm just wondering if it'll help speed up the computer or you know, improve performance. Why would you ever want to update it, Ryan? Well, I mean, is there you any know, point? For, for people who, especially performance geeks, who want the best out of their machine, okay. um, especially that, do you have a very expensive motherboard, or is it one that came with your system when you bought it? It's the one I got. It's a gigabyte. Um, it's, pretty, it's a pretty nice motherboard. I mean, I would here. probably check online to see what the uh, uh, updated BIOS would do uh -huh. in terms of performance or added functionality. But my rule of thumb, if, it's ain't, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Right. Especially you know, with the BIOS. You know, the BIOS is relatively easy to update. However, it's also very easy to screw up. And if you screw up in between there, you're going to end up with a paperweight, and you would have probably have to send the motherboard back or uh, get some sort of service uh, disk sent to I'm you. I'm still a little confused, Raj. If you do update it, then it allows your computer to recognize the operating system faster, or what? No, uh, most of the time, BIOS updates, what they d really are, are patches. If there's any flaws with additional okay. hardware. For example, when they made the motherboard, yeah. a brand new video card hasn't been introduced yet. It's going to be introduced six months later, so they don't know if any you know compatib incompatibility they might have uh -huh. when that board you know that new video card comes out it has all these conflicts the board doesn't run right your screen turns various shades of purple you don't know what's going on <laughs> right. that's when they release a BIOS update to patch that deficiency okay or if they've you know tried to implement implement some new features for example support for USB 2.0 uh -huh. or FireWire 
or some additional hardware that wasn't you know there before they will often release a BIOS update. Okay. Um, if you're not having any issues Dave and you don't really need um, any you know added functionality to your system leave it leave well enough alone. Your system's working fine I, I understand correct? Yes. Um, yeah you know why tempt the fates by trying to update when you don't have to. If you're running into hardware conflicts, running into software conflicts, Windows is having problems with your hardware, programs that you might be installing are having problems with your hardware, uh -huh. then you might consider doing an update. But if it's not, none of those, I, I would err on the safe side and just you know not update at all. Where do you go to find info about how to do that? Rose? Well, the best place to go actually, let me see if I can pull up the site, uh, is the motherboard manufacturer. In this case, okay. it's uh, Gigabyte. So I'm going to go so to gigabyte.com. How do you figure out what type of motherboard you have? Oftentimes, uh, it is... Uh, Can you run a scan through PC Pit Stop? Normally, when the computer boots up, you'll see it. Mm -hmm. And it will tell you, like, for example, uh, Blah blah blah. ASUS board. Okay. Um, or you can run a scan. Or you PC can you can run a scan PC. Or if you want, you just take the case off. Uh, you would actually go into the uh, products for that particular uh, device, the motherboard in this okay. case, and you would go into support. Okay. Oh, BIOS right there. What missed it? Motherboard BIOS. Uh huh. And you would just click on that. It would actually come with a bunch of instructions as well as as a flashing utility to actually flash the BIOS. Okay. This requires you you actually make a boot disk. So you have to be comfortable with you know, creating a boot disk, putting all these files on, putting the uh, BIOS flasher on, having a floppy so you can boot from it, and then flash it. It you know, it's scary. It, it's, it is scary. It's very painless, I, okay. I can assure you. It's very painless. Maybe However, we'll do it on the show. Very, things can go wrong. Mm -hmm. You know, you probably have a 30% chance of something going wrong. Okay. You know, and that's... 30%? Where, you know, maybe, you know, more like maybe 13, I should say. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, on, on the whole, leave it alone. <laughs> three. Leave okay. it alone. You know, okay, if, okay. if nothing's going wrong, leave it alone. All right, All right, Dave? Okay, thanks a lot, guys. <laughs> right. No problem. <laughs> Coming up next, we're going to take a look at a website that will let you create your very own custom laptop bags and messenger bags. You design them, they make it, and it's just as easy as that. There they are right there. But before we head to the break, let's test your tech knowledge with today's daily quiz. Head over to our website, click on the quiz, and if you give us the right answer, we just might give you a Tech TV teacher. So tell me what nonlinear editing system was released by Lucasfilm in 1984. Media 1138, Edit Droid, Lightwave, or Wookie Works will reveal the answer later in the show, so stay tuned. Be the envy of all your friends with Call for Help wallpaper and icons decorating your computer. Head over to our website, scroll down the page. I feel like I say that every day, but that's what you have to do. Click here on Deck Your Desktop, yo. And then what you have to do is decide which wallpaper, you, well, we have wallpaper, icons, and even if you've got a Mac, you can get your icon set. Download it, you're gonna have to unzip them, and then your computer will be Call for Helpified. Go to our website, do it now, it's really fun. All right, so check out these bags I got here, cool. Roger. Aren't they great? Look how cute. These bags awesome. are awesome. Hand me that no. brown one right there. No. Okay, this what? is the most awesome one. Now, what are these bags for here, Kat? Well, the reason why this one is actually my favorite one is because I actually made it. You made it? Yeah. You actually did the stitching? No, and the, oh, no. but I designed it. it oh, cool. oh, oh. <laughs> Through this very cool website. It's from Timbuktu.com. It's a company that's been around for a very long time making extremely cool messenger bags. I know all the messengers here in San Francisco carry them around. Go to their website to find all of the products that they have for sale. They've got messenger bags, laptop bags, lifestyle accessories. Lifestyle bags. Yeah, I'll show you. I've got a lifestyle bag right here. Um, going through, you can choose, um, say you want a messenger bag. They've got so many different colors to choose from. They even have some funky patterns you can put on your bag. They like you to really customize your bag on this website. And I'm going to show you how to build your own. But if you want information about which size bag, everything that you need to know about each type of bag is Extra down at the large. bottom of the page. And I like how they give descriptions like, also known to hold four six-pack cans or two six-pack wow. yeah, bottles of your choice. So they're a little bit on the expensive side, but these bags but you last get to customize it. for a really long time. They've got awesome laptop bags. Let me see the laptop Yes. Bag. This is really cool because it's got this really nice gription right here. Gription? Yeah, feel that right there. Wow. That's what I call gription. No slipping on this one. And this is for my 15-inch. It's going to fit nicely in here. <laughs> 
It's got some nice corduroy. What did you just say? It said no slipping. Oh. <laughs> what do you think um, I said? I don't know. Check out <laughs> this is the yoga bag they have for sale. Yoga bag? Yeah. Now what's a yoga bag? How's that? Colors. It's super trendy and awesome. It's oh, just a so nice you can stick your yoga mat in. You stick in. your yoga mat in here. Yeah, you got it right there. All right. And then you open up the bag like this. So you put your wet stuff on one side, your dry stuff on the other side, and then if you have a scooter or a bike, whatever, this just sits on the back, just oh, like cool. just like on the website. But the coolest part is yet to come. It's where you can actually customize your own bag. So you go up to build your own bag, choose the size of bag that you want. L ocho, D8. Then you choose the type of fabric. There's two different type of fabrics. This is the most fun part. You get to choose the colors. Oh, of cool! You the get bag. the. It's like a Neapolitan ice cream. Yeah, <laughs> sure. Well, that's, no, I just, that's so actually kind of cool. You so you can select your design skills, and then you can add accessories. Like, where's the little iPod case? iPod right here. You can have, you can add things onto it, like an iPod case, a strap pouch, two-way radio holster. Strap Look at this thing. Pouch. And they're all meant to go directly on. Oh, the so they're they're designed to custom fit the, the sleeves. Uh, yeah. I mean, how cute am I going to be when I get this all on here? I just need an iPod to go in it now. Cool. Well, you get the idea. So. The custom mat bag that I made was about 130 bucks, but look how big it is, and it's so nice, totally waterproof. And uh, the best part of this entire segment, I keep saying that it gets better and better, it does, is that we actually went to the factory and checked out how these bad boys are made. Let's take a look at that. So it's awesome because you place your order, it shows up on this computer, wow. there's the factory, it's sent directly down an assembly line, there's guys cutting fabric as you're walking around, and then your bag gets made. Cool. Just like that, they grab the different strips of fabric that they need to make each bag, and then uh, it just is sent through this line. It takes about 12 minutes from start to finish to make one bag, and then there's the label of my bag. They just ship it to you. This came cool. to me in one day. One day from after you, you ordered it? Yeah, one day, the next it? day. Hey, that's pretty and they've snazzy. they've got these great straps on them, and I, I, don't, I really like the laptop bags. They've got it down. I feel like my computer is totally safe in there, and uh, it's, it's got gription. Description. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Lots of fun accessories on the site too. You got to go check it out. All the details though are on our website, techtv.com slash call for help. Send me an email. I want to know what your custom bag looked like. You have to go check them out. And if you want a gift, send somebody a gift certificate from the site. They can build their can, own bag. Can you put the gription on any other bag or just the laptop um, ones? I think it's just the laptop bags uh, and they've got a whole slew of bags coming out cool. too. So look for awesome. that. Awesome. Yep. Um, oh, oh, we know what that means. It's time for our T-Mobile call of the day. With T-Mobile, you get more from life, more minutes, more features, more service. And on the phone, it's Chris from Danielsville, Georgia. Hello, Chris. Hey, Hello. Chris. Hey. Too bad you can't see my bags. I mean, these are kind of cool. Kind of. They're okay, so Okay, cool. they're awesome. Yeah, like even this backpack has the ability to put a laptop. Okay, we'll answer your question now, Chris. What's up? <laughs> how can um, we help you, Chris? I was wondering how to remove a key logger from my system. All right, now is this key log or something someone put on deliberately, or is it kind of a Trojan or uh, something you got through an email attachment? Like a Trojan um, through email. How do you through know email. it's on there? Um, I'm pretty sure of it. <laughs> Why is somebody like telling you what your AIM conversations are saying? I had that happen once. Kinda. Yeah. Ah, so you're kind of suspicious. That's it's, really it's not fun. like you know for sure, but you're suspicious. All the signs point to yes. Yeah. It's like when uh, Kevin Rose comes up to me and starts asking me about my dinner last night. That's fun. Wow. Yeah. Well, maybe if you didn't mo blog everything, people no. wouldn't. Uh, no. 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 All right. <laughs> well, um, what I'm going to tell you first is that um, do you, if you knew specifically what you had, um, like what Trojan you were infected with, mm -hmm. you would be able to go to a site like, for example, Symantec, and he would actually offer you a fix. Now, these fixes are only for very widespread Trojans or viruses that infect a lot of people, not for, not for some that probably only uh, bothers about 100 people, but uh -huh. literally millions of people. They'll often offer a tool that they call, you know, Trojan removal tool in the name of the, the virus or Trojan that uh, afflicts your PC. Okay. Failing that, you don't know, you would probably want to use something like SpyBot Search and Destroy. This and is a great program. It's a great program, and the, one of the beauties is it actually does monitor for key loggers and uh, uh, Trojans. Of course, you, what you want to do is once you have it launched is to update it immediately because he's always putting out new uh, definitions okay. for the program. It's very simple. Just go to online uh -huh. and search for updates, and it's going to go and check online for the updates. And when you're done, all you need to do is go run SpyBot Search and Destroy uh -huh. and click on Search and Destroy, and it's going to run through the entire system. Search and Destroy. Now, that you would also want to use in conjunction an antivirus program, uh, you know, preferably one with 
an updated virus definition in it and run them in tandem. So run SpyBot search and destroy first, uh -huh. and then your antivirus. Or act no, actually run your antivirus first, then SpyBot search and destroy. Okay. Does that help you out? Yeah. All cool. Right, good. Hopefully uh, you find the perpetrator because, you know, you don't want people kind of snooping on your PC without your permission. Seek yeah, him out and definitely. then destroy him for us. All right, thanks for your call. Coming up next, Windows, everyone window shops, but does anyone window shop on eBay? Hmm, if you don't, you might be missing out. We look at some of the greatest bargains that you can find on eBay when Call for Help returns. Electronics or collectibles, when you're shopping on eBay, you usually know what you're looking for. But have you ever tried window shopping on eBay? There are some great bargains to be had, but you've got to know where to look. So here to help us is co-author of Sell It on eBay, Toby Molina. There's your book right there. Beautiful. Now, oh, beauty. Tech TV's on the top of that. I like that. So how do you window shop on eBay? I know you can just find anything, but window shopping? Well, the first thing to do, first of all, you have to look at eBay as this amazing mall okay <laughs> with thousands and thousands that of storefronts you store can friends. spend all your money in and really it's you know, almost even like a museum you don't have you can in fact window shop window shopping is supposedly not spending money right. but you can go and you, you can look at you can see uh, unbelievable untold riches all right show start me. on the ebay uh home page mm -hmm. and there's all kinds of little teasers here dvd burners african drums speakers the usual yeah <laughs> Uh, things you'd never see next to each other in a regular mall. Right. Um, and you can scroll around, look for their, their sorted bargains that they're, they're trying to uh, trying to push, push on, on you. that week. Okay. And then on the left-hand side of the screen is your categories. All and right. then you can start to look in specific categories you might be interested in. However, at the top of any eBay page, yep. click the Browse button. Okay. And you will find yourself in Ooh, nice little windows some of the to top categories. Okay. Um, interesting stuff, Julian watches, cars, coins, tickets, but if you really want to get to the mother load of category uh -huh. listings and see what window shopping is all about, yeah. see all categories. And then Holy you start moly. to get into the unbelievable minutia of eBay. How many categories are on this you, page? It's impossible to know at any one moment because right now eBay is going through this process mm -hmm. of um, rolling up a lot of categories and adding new ones and changing things around to make things easier for sellers and for buyers. So I would say saying thousands is not uh, an overestimation Whoa. by any stretch of the imagination. Thousands um, of yeah. ways for you to spend it's, all your money. It's amazing. Racquetball. Uh, and then you can get into the, you know, you go to home and garden. Uh huh. Food and wine, furniture. And here you can find everything from toilet seats to swimming pools. Okay. <laughs> they, you they are swimming pool They are eBay? all there. So yeah, there, now you think about what are the kinds of things that you wouldn't think about buying swimming on eBay. Right. Swimming pools would be one of them. What else? Um, uh, a friend of mine is homeschooling her kids. Okay. And so we decided we would look on eBay and see if there were any of the textbooks, recommended textbooks. And so we just put in of a couple course. of names and there's one right there. This is a grade six earth science book. Okay. One that she happens to need. All right. Great price, much, much more expensive new. Okay. Uh, and so she's continued on and found another number of books. So this is perfect. Okay, show me some weird stuff. Really weird. weird stuff. Yeah, I want to get freaky. Okay, well, first I have to mention. Yeah. My particular toothbrush of choice. Okay. <laughs> I'm obsessed with these toothbrushes. You are? Yes. And for four dollars, you can. I have an electronic <laughs> toothbrush. I have one too, but yeah. when I'm on the road, I don't take it with me. Okay. So. Here you can buy six of these toothbrushes yeah. for four dollars right. online. They're two dollars and forty-nine cents a piece. Okay. So even with shipping great deal. It's like going to Costco without ever having to leave. Well, the so house. how does someone end up selling something like this? Are there stores that this just is, sell things this like this? This is wholesaling. These wholesale. are people who are doing business like Costco is, or any other wholesale uh, store is doing business. They're buying huge uh, lots of things and then dividing them up and selling Smart. them at teeny, teeny, tiny weirder. prices. I want or they're stealing them. You know. Oh. <laughs> no. Uh, <laughs> my toothbrush fell off my the back toothbrush of my truck. My toothbrush is not hot. Uh, um, weirder. Okay. Here is home decor. Okay. Who barbed doesn't wire need toilet the barbed seat. wire toilet seat? <laughs> <laughs> Something you would really never think of looking for. These two things to me do not work together. Oh barbed wire, God. toilet seat. That's awesome. No. So it's plastic, right? And then it's I, just uh, in it. Hopefully. <gasps> oh it my is God! I need that. I think, need it. How much think, is it? It's about. Well, I don't even think. I think there's a bid. Okay. Uh, it's uh, right now. It's at 39 bucks. Oh my bucks. gosh! I'm going to go buy it. But uh, nobody buy it. I'm buying it. You have four days left, so I would keep okay. an eye on it because th there may be people. Oh. 
sitting and waiting. Right. Okay. Now, if you it's don't, if you, as it were, um, if you if you lose out, okay, there's always the Ooh, cowhide toilet the seat. Cow this is a this is a perfectly. <gasps> oh, now I'm torn. Which one? You're certainly I? gonna be torn <laughs> if you buy the barbed wire seat. <laughs> <laughs> Torn the, for sure. How much is this one? This one, I think, it had no bids when I last looked. No bids. Uh, it's uh, th 40 bucks. Okay. If you really, really want it, you can buy it now <laughs> for 65 All right. Uh, let's see. What, uh, what else have we got here? So, in other words, there are all kinds of right. weird, bizarre things. And let's say you... Um, you decide you want to buy a shower curtain. Okay. And you think I'll go to Nordstrom or wherever, and they've got a good selection. Uh -huh. However... Go to eBay, yeah. search for shower curtain, right. and you will find well over 2,000 hits. <gasps> so that means thousand. you can start, and they've got every fabric, shower vinyl, curtain. other. Yeah, exactly. You can look for fa fabric okay. shower curtains, vinyl shower curtains. Very strange. With Elvis shower curtains, you know, everything you could possibly imagine. So the, the right. breadth of what right. you can choose for. Well, this is great. It's huge. So you really can find anything you want on eBay. Oh, yes. Including a barbed wire toilet seat that I'm buying. So don't even, <laughs> don't even think about it. All right. Well, thank you so much for these interesting things. And we have more information on our website. If you want to find hot deals on eBay, head over there, techtv.com slash call for help. Thank you so much for that. You're welcome. Up next, the big board's all powered up, and we've got a contestant on the line who's ready to win some prizes. The Wired World Challenge coming at ya when call for help continues. Welcome back. It's now time for the Wired World Challenge. For that, we're going to need a contestant. So who's on the line? Kat? Oh, Roger, on the phone. It's Adrian from Estelle Springs, Tennessee. Go! Hey, Adrian, you ready to play? Yes, sir. All right, let me remind you how this game works. I have in my hand questions from four categories. You uh -huh. pick one category and I ask you a text or science-related trivia question. You have 15 seconds to come up with the answer. If you answer correctly, you'll get a shot at our giant prize board right behind me, where we've covered up some amazing prizes. Sound okay. good? I'm familiar with it, yeah. All right, Adrian. These are the categories for today. Bitty, okay. bitty, bitty. Beside myself, dude, where's my website? And Max Speak. Which what, one is it going to be? What was the first one? First one is bitty, bitty, bitty. Mm -hmm. Don't ask me. I don't write these. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what, what, run those through me again. I'm, I'm sorry. I have All right. Bitty, bitty, bitty. Beside mm -hmm. myself, dude, where's my website? And Max Speak. Um, let's try beside myself. Beside myself. All right. So the question is, ooh, a website that is a replica of an already exist. Whoops, is that the right one? Beside myself. Yeah. A website that is a replica of an already existing website is called what? Um. Oh, I have no idea. Oftentimes when you download and want to click on a file and you can't get it from that site, it says there's another site you can get it from. And those are called what? You look at it in the morning when you shave. Um, I, uh, uh, shave in the morning, you look at a, a mirror. A mirror. mirror. I'm oh, sorry. I should have known that. I'm sorry. All right, Kat, do we have another those contestant? good clues. You tried to help him out. Um, on the line right now, it's uh, Carolyn from Wichita, Texas. Hey, Carlin. Carolyn. How are you doing? I am surviving well, thank you. Cool. All right. Uh, what we have left is Max Speak. Dude, where's my website? And Biddy, Biddy, Biddy. Let's go Max Speak. Max Speak. All right. Hope you're a Mac fanatic because here's the question. What classic George Orwell novel did Apple reference in its famous 1984 Super Bowl? 1984. Commercial? 1984. Got it. All right. Now you get to choose a number off our giant prize board behind me. Let's work with 14 today. Number 14. Yes, please. Ah, you went to the Studio 8. This is actually a great home video editing system. They just came out with 9, but 8 is still pretty darn good. Let you do a lot of things, including editing for DVDs. Sound good? Cool. All right, cool. Much appreciate but it. Wire World Challenge is happening every day, so head over to our website to sign up, and you just might be our next contestant. If you have one more chance to take our daily quiz, head over to our website, click on the quiz link, and if you give us the right answer, we might just give you a Tech TV t-shirt. All right, here's today's question. What nonlinear editing system was released by Lucasfilm in 1984? Was it Media 1138, Edit Droid, Lightwave, or Wookie Works? 
Think about it, we'll be right back with the answer. Before the break, we asked you what nonlinear editing system was revealed by Lucasfilm in 1984. A, Media 1138, Edit Droid, Lightwave, or Wookie Works? The answer is B, Edit Droid. Edit Droid presented a pioneering approach to movie editing with its laser disc based system. Although it was unveiled in the public 1984, the first film to make it using Edit Droid was Return of the Jedi, which was released in 1983. It was oh, an okay movie in the contrast. You know, it's kind of weird because, you know, LaserDisc, you can't write on it. What they, what they did was just take clips off and they would queue up the LaserDisc to the appropriate moment. So when you tried to uh, paste all the clips together, they would yeah. just read off each LaserDisc with the appropriate clip on it. Wow, Roger. Kind of kludgy considering we use hard drives today. Yeah. All right. Um, okay, so before we check the email, let's take a look at some of the awesome stuff coming up on Call for Help next week. Make cell phone calls online, PC World's. Um, Aoife McAvoy will be here with a roundup of the best VoIP services, VoIP, V-O-I-P that is. Plus, we'll show you how to find and use coupon codes when you're buying stuff online. They'll save you a ton of cash if you know how to use them. Then, is your Wi-Fi connection taking down the entire neighborhood? Possibly, could be because of this new, uh, new protocol that's happening. It's actually pretty interesting. Our lab guys will be here to show you how to practice good Wi-Fi etiquette. And if you've ever wanted to make your own video game, you're in luck because we're going to start from the beginning with a five-part series that's going to help you create your very own games. That's going to be cool. Can you really, at the end, make of your own game, Raj? You know, if you paid attention, hopefully yes. <laughs> All right, very cool. You ready for the email? Yes. Okay, why did zip disks go out of style? Because zip disks were surpassed by CD CDRs, DVDRs, CDRWs. Basically, your average zip disk held 100 megabytes. Later versions held 250, but yeah. you know, that's no, that's no 650 megabytes on the CDR. Zip disks per disk were more expensive, uh, a little less uh, uh, kind to uh, lots of lots of banging around. So what happened is everyone moved over to optical-based storage media, and the zip disk went the way of the dinosaur. Mm, very good. Um, my Windows, this is from our message boards, uh, my Windows shutdown is taking about 10 minutes. Why is it taking so long? What can I do to speed it up? Uh, it's, I don't know what OS he's running. It's probably hanging on an application that refuses to quit or uh -huh. just doesn't like you. Um, so what you might want to do is just check to see what's actually running on your system. If you're running 98 and 95, oftentimes it takes longer to shut down than XP because XP in 2000 used a journaling filing system, which basically allows a quicker shutdown. Uh, but then again, you know, just check. Any programs hanging, anything that you might have not closed all the way down when you try to shut down your PC. Okay. Um, this guy wants to know, have you heard any rumors about any new iPods coming out? Should I wait to buy one or not? Um, you know what? Technology always rolls on. You're going to be waiting until you're 60 if you're always going to wait for the right. latest and greatest. Buy what you can afford now and enjoy it because, you know, 10 years time, actually, believe it or not, 3 years time, yeah. you know, something, something heard, new is going to come uh, out. they're coming out with a new one. Probably, and I wouldn't doubt it. Uh, yeah, of course. And it's really big. I mean, it has it's a really huge big. hard drive. Ooh. Huge hard drive. I like things with huge hard drives. Interesting changes to the dial or something, but yeah. Stay tuned for that. I'm sure we'll get them as soon as they come out. All right. We'd like to thank today's guest, Toby Molina. I hope you enjoy the show. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again on Monday. Thank you very much. <laughs> really got out of that one. <laughs> oh. Buy my book. You know, I think there's a good answer to this in my book. I like I ever tell you how much I love OS X?